remember Danny as being very garrulous, quite cheery. He was a, he was a happy man, he was a, always good fun. Uh, bustling about full of energy, he obviously loved his job. Dan was a, was one of the, the most impressive men I, I've met. He was very enthusiastic, I mean, a, a really nice guy. I first met Danny, it would probably be the late 70s, early 80s, and the, when I was with the Scottish Film Archive, as it was then, and we were newly established and we were trying to find if there was any old film in Scotland, and we visited the Kelburn, and Danny showed us around the picture house, and he let us into the old projection room and all the rest of it. And then he took us round the back, and there was this store, and it was just full of stuff. Yeah, my, my eldest memory, funny enough, is the, the chaos of his bedroom. He, we were small when they lived in, in, in George Street, and we were never really allowed into his bedroom eh, because of the number of televisions. People would ask him, Dan, could you fix this television? Could you fix this? And he always would take them in, but gradually the, the televisions piled up. Good fun to, to have about, especially eh, when younger. Dan and I had lockups beside each other. He stayed in the Maxwellton Court High Flats, and I lived just next to the high at the, the lockups. And he came up with a couple of cans of film. He said, there you go, you can have those for the archive. Uh, so that was the first time I'd met him, and over the succeeding years, he, he would occasionally phone up and say, oh, I found something else, I found something else. And uh, he, that he would film, old film, that he would donate to the Scottish Screen Archive. It was his job to keep the projectors running, you know, he was the engineer, um, to keep the, the cinemas functioning, to put on the best show they possibly could. And he had a pride in doing a good job and putting on a good show. He loved, he loved his job and it shone through in the passion he had for, for it. His wider role was a, basically took him all over Scotland, making sure that the, basically the, the, the projectors, the film, everything was in working order. If you mentioned any town in Scotland, he could very quickly tell you the name of the cinema, the location of it, and more likely not, who was the manager of the cinema. I mean, when Danny was working in the cinema, the projectionists, yes, they put on the show, but they also chose the music to play in the auditorium when the, when the people were coming in. Um, you know, they would make sure that the curtains opened at the right time. Um, and, you know, they, they had more to do than just get the picture on the screen. It was the whole presentation and the whole experience of going to the cinema. And it was the projectionist really who had a role to play in that. Uh, nitrocellulose film is hellish material to work with. It's chemically unstable. It's made from the same ingredients as gun cotton. Uh, and it's, uh, it can go on fire, it can explode. Uh, it doesn't need oxygen to burn, so when if, if the, the film is set on fire, you can't put it out. His original job was apparently as a runner. He, he used to take the films from the, the La Scala cinema, those who remember the La Scala, and jump in the tram car down to the Kelburn cinema. But unfortunately, he, there was a health and safety issue with carrying the, the sort of film on the tram cars, and very often he'd be put off and have to run the rest of it. Well, it was much more hand-knitted, rough round the edges, um, uh, because each cinema was different. Last Scala, Picture House, Astoria, uh, even going back to the old Gwen Cinema, which is no longer there either. All those picture houses, the Kelburn, the ABC Miners, everybody has memories, I have memories going to them. There's nothing more exciting than queuing up outside, waiting to go in to see a film. Now they, they get you into a foyer, and your, your popcorn and all that and your right through. But uh, those days you were standing outside having to wait to get in and uh, it was a case of, oh, I think I'll be in next and then the rope would go down with the commissioner. <laughs> Sorry, need to wait. There was always this slight um, question mark, is anything going to go wrong? Is the projector going to break down or whatever? If the projector broke down, everybody stamped their feet till they get restarted. That was the West End for you. The cinemas you get nowadays, the auditoria are smaller. And now, uh, 
if you go to the cinema and you're sitting in a four or five hundred seat auditorium, you think that's quite big. But when I was going to the matinees as a kid, I was in a 1200 seater cinema. It was cavernous. So there was a sense of going to a picture palace, whereas now you get a kind of fairly anodyne black box. What I remember about the Kelburn is it seemed to be a wee bit classy compared to the other cinemas in and about Paisley. It seemed to have a wee air of its own. There was always queues on a Saturday night for the cinema. The projection light coming through, that, that's something you don't really get in the cinema now. You don't get this vision of the white uh, light coming down onto the screen, you know, and that was, that was very impressive. And it used to be great when you looked up, you could actually see the projectionist looking through the wee window. You don't can I you don't can I get that kind of atmosphere now. The last gala was a popular one, and as I said earlier, eh, Uncle Dan, you, Bill, eh, the the manager, and every so often he would slip us a few free tickets, complimentary tickets. So we managed to avoid the queues at the the last gala. The picture house, I remember the picture house very well. Out on the balcony, or all the sweets coming down and popcorn, what have you? Yeah, what's what's a good fun? It's just all kind of become big business, I think. Whereas there was character and personality about the old, the old ways of going to the pictures, um, then I kind of miss that. Nowadays, everything would be on files. So you see here, if I go to content for this cinema, this is all feature films that are on files and on my library system. 99% of cinemas in the whole country are digital now. There is only two or three, I believe, run 35. Basically what we have here is the 35mm projectors, which are looked upon, I suppose, as old technology now, although we still do use them, but pretty rarely. And I still think it looks better. Although, again, the gap is disappearing, slowly but surely, and probably will in the future. The, the films that Danny found in the old La Scala were a number of what we call local topical or local newsreel films. And these were films made specifically for the cinema. And they would be of some local event that would get people out on the streets, whether it's the unveiling of the War Memorial or a local gala day. A lot of the local topical films that were made for cinemas tended to be made for cinemas in small towns and small communities. It wasn't the big city centre cinemas that would make these local newsreels. It was the small cinemas rooted in the community. And it needs people like Danny who were there on the ground, who knew about their local situation and knew the history of their local picture house. So you, you really need local heroes like Danny to help you as an archive uh, get to where the material is and make sure we can save not just footage of the, our Scotland's cities, but footage of the smaller communities around Scotland. I think Dan's going to leave a, a good legacy for the people of Paisley. Those films are dating back to the 1960s, 70s, and uh, I think Dan preserved those films in a, in a good way, uh, where we can actually still look at them as the same as they were when they were first produced. So yes, his collection uh, is uh, actually second to none. But, uh, a lot of stuff was sort of scattered round about, but most of his precious stuff was all kept in pristine condition because he knew at some time or another, other people would like to see his collection. There's, there's nothing uh, that Dan didn't really know about cinema and uh, this is where his passion comes through. Everything to do with his film and his work, that was his life. But Dan himself was a, was a lovely man. Um, if, if you met Dan, you would, just, you would just connect with him right away. You don't realise a person like that is in your own backyard or is your own uncle, and, uh, and it's sometimes the nature of the of the of the beast that when they when they do pass away and, and projects like Paisley 2021 come aboard, you begin to realise 
uh, how much of a, a contribution they actually made. He, he was just my uncle Dan, as opposed to the man who who did all this sort of thing uh, for the for the film of Paisley and for the the, the film industry in in, in general.